In this following video, we'd like to discuss the two techniques of cortex removal, that is, the bimanual irrigation aspiration technique, followed by the coaxial or the unimanual irrigation aspiration technique. We will discuss the technical details as well as the merits and the limitations of both techniques. Let's start with understanding the bimanual irrigation aspiration technique. Now let's get started. In order to orient you properly, I'd just like you to know that being a left-handed surgeon, I create my main incision superiorly at 65 degrees. The left side port is primarily used for the irrigation and the aspiration. And the side port on the right is initially used to introduce the Sinsky hook or the chopper during nucleus disassembly and later enlarged for irrigation aspiration. In this patient with a early nucleus sclerosis, who is to undergo a phaco emulsification, let's now understand the sizing of the incisions required for bimanual irrigation aspiration. The left side port incision, which we know now is going to be used only for the irrigation aspiration, needs to be as large as is demonstrated above. This sized incision allows for ease of instrumentation without any excessive aggressive fluid. The side port incision on the right to start with needs to be really much smaller as demonstrated. Now this size of an incision is all that is required for ease of instrumentation during nuclear emulsification. Upon the completion of the nuclear emulsification, the surgeon should always perform a viscofluid exchange to prevent a collapse of the anterior chamber. The surgeon now enlarges the right side port incision to make it just the right size to allow for comfortable instrumentation during irrigation aspiration. Now these are the irrigation aspiration cannulas. The irrigation cannula is on the left. It is the larger of the two cannulas and as you can see it's got its irrigation ports on either side. The aspiration port on the other hand is a lot smaller approximately 0.3 millimeters in size, which lies on the side of the cannula. Now let's look at the movement of the instruments in the eye. The irrigation cannula is introduced and placed in the eye in such a position that its ports lie facing the angle. You will now see how the aspiration cannula is turned in the eye to enable easier access to the underlying cortex. The same is repeated with the aspiration cannula introduced on the other side. We now move to the actual irrigation aspiration itself. At the outset, the irrigation is introduced into the eye. The surgeon then introduces the aspiration cannula, which in this case is on the right side, and then starts to, in a circumferential manner, hold on to the cortex, draw it towards the center, and then aspirate it. So whilst the aspiration cannula in this case is introduced through the right side, the surgeon will remove as much cortex as he comfortably can. Once that is done, the surgeon now just changes hands that is, the irrigation is now introduced through the right side, the aspiration cannula through the left, and now, with ease, the surgeon is comfortably able to remove all the residual cortex. This is followed by capsule polish. And at the end of which, as you can see here is the hydro implantation of the IOL, which is with the irrigation still in the eye, the IOL is inserted into the capsular bag. This is followed by the visco wash and finally by the stromal hydration.
Here are a few of the fundamentals of irrigation aspiration. The first thing you need to be sure of is that you have a very good focus on the entire cortex itself. Number two, the anterior chamber should be deepened with viscoelastic. Now this not only helps you focus, it also retains that focus when your irrigation enters the eye. Next, it is always the irrigation that enters the eye first, followed by the aspiration. It is also important to ensure that you do not create significant folds in the cornea whilst the instruments negotiate and find their way in and around the eye whilst accessing the cortex. At all times, you need to ensure that you are protecting the corneal endothelium and this is achieved by using adequate viscoelastic both at the beginning of irrigation aspiration and even midway when we change hands around. You also need to ensure that the ports of the irrigation cannula never just directly face the endothelium because that jet of fluid would again damage the endothelium. Always ensure careful instrumentation while your instruments move in and out of the eye. Sometimes a side port that may be a little too small may result in damage to the wound or the endothelium itself. And finally, the last point I'd like to make is always ensure a well-maintained anterior chamber. The way you're going to be able to do this is by performing a viscofluid exchange prior to the removal of the irrigation from the eye. Let's now look at what happens if we were to choose a 20 gauge MVR to create the side ports for the irrigation aspiration. So the left paracentesis incision is created by the introduction of the 20 gauge MVR such that its entire width enters into the eye and then is retracted. The incision thus created is of an optimal size for the introduction of a 20 or a 21 gauge irrigation aspiration cannula. Now the incision on the right initially is made only partial. Please note how only part of the MVR is introduced into the eye, which allows for ease of instrumentation during nuclear emulsification, at the end of which the surgeon performs a viscofluid exchange to prevent the chamber from shallowing. It is at this point that the surgeon now reintroduces the MVR through the right paracentesis all the way in and all the way out to get you now a suitably sized incision for irrigation aspiration. We are now ready for the bimanual irrigation aspiration. It's worth noting that the incisions created by the MVR blade allow for the ease of instrumentation in and out of the eye. You may now watch the irrigation aspiration procedure under direct visualization and while maintaining a perfect focus throughout this procedure, the surgeon in a sequential manner removes all the cortex from within the capsular bag. Should at any point the irrigation block the viewing of the cortex, it is just moved on the side as you've just seen. Whilst the cortex is being aspirated, the irrigation cannula just rubs on the mouth of the aspiration cannula, thereby facilitating the aspiration of the cortex. Now towards the end of irrigation aspiration, the aspiration cannula is removed and the surgeon performs a viscofluid exchange. This helps maintain the chamber at all times. The surgeon now regains focus onto the cortex and proceeds with the aspiration from the opposite side. This according to me is the greatest advantage of a bimanual irrigation aspiration over a coaxial IA. This is followed by the hydro implantation of the intraocular lens within the capsular bag.
the visco wash, and finally, the stromal hydration. 